supply and demand. Everyone's heard of it, but how does it work? Take silver. We know it's affected by supply and demand, but how? How much silver do we have and how much of that do people use? What happens when the world uses more silver than it produces? Where does the extra go when the opposite is true? Silver is a relatively rare metal. In fact, the total volume of silver ever mined would fit into a football stadium. There are two major sources of silver production, new metal and recycled scrap. About three quarters of all silver production is refined from mine sources. Of this new metal, only a quarter comes from mines that specialize in silver production. The rest is a byproduct of mines that specialize in more lucrative metals such as gold, copper, and zinc. This is changing. With today's high silver prices, many new silver deposits have become economical to mine as a primary metal. Political and economic conditions in these places have a large effect on how much it costs to mine the silver and thus how much of it gets produced. In 2011, increased electricity costs in Mexico and increased labor costs in Peru both drove up the cost of producing silver. The remainder of the silver supply comes from scrap. Much of the silver sold as scrap comes from jewelry, ornaments, and tableware that's sold for profit when prices are high. The remainder of the scrap supply comes from industrial recycling. This category is less price sensitive as silver recovered through recycling needs to be sold regardless of market price. All in all, the total silver supply in 2011 was just under 1 billion troy ounces, about the size of a small building. But that small building was enough to supply the world's industrial needs. Silver's unique properties make it sought after for many, many uses. It's the best conductor of electricity as well as heat. It's also photosensitive, antibacterial, and a chemical catalyst used in the production of many plastics. These properties make silver hard to replace, and the replacements that are available are often precious metals that are even more expensive. But the biggest use? We look at it. A third of all silver demand is for earrings, necklaces, brooches, bracelets, bangles, and rings. We use it to dine in style and even to worship our gods. In electronics, silver is indispensable for its conductivity its presence in virtually every electronic product adds up quickly. Your laptop contains about a gram of silver, and your car as much as 10 to 20 grams. LEDs, used in everything from TVs to light fixtures, make use of silver's photosensitivity. RFID chips are produced in the billions to provide wireless information about every product imaginable, and they use silver to transmit radio waves. Historically, silver's photosensitivity has made photography the largest industrial use. While traditional film has mostly gone away, the industry still accounts for about 12% of silver demand, as x-rays and physical prints used in industrial printing still require silver. The shrinking photo demand is more than offset by new demand in the solar industry. Solar panels make heavy use of silver as the world looks increasingly towards green energy. Many other industries show interest in its antibacterial properties. The medical industry uses silver to discourage microbe growth in everything from bandages to hospital gowns. Clothing manufacturers use it to inhibit the growth of bacteria that makes sweat stink. Restaurants use it to purify water and to make sanitary cooking surfaces. With so many uses, the silver market is changing constantly. 30 years ago, the price of silver was $5 an ounce. The biggest industrial use was photography, and demand outpaced production as nations around the world sold off their silver reserves. Today, most of those reserves are gone. The silver price is flirting with record highs, 
and silver production has increased to 15% above demand. Where did that extra supply go? There's more to the picture. Find out in part two.